Hey guys, I'm Tris, and just before we jump into my review today, I just want to say a big thank you to Jack of All Controllers, who accepted my uh, application to join their team. And it's really cool, and I'm really excited for it, and I'm going to be writing reviews for them, mainly around the PC and Nintendo Switch. Anyways, thank you so much, guys. Today I'll be reviewing Rack and Ruin for the Nintendo Switch. Let's jump into that review. Rack and Ruin is an action RPG with light bullet hell elements. Developed by LifeSpark Entertainment and published by Secret Item Games, Rack and Ruin releases on the 13th of March. In this game, you play as Rack, a demon lord chosen by the utterly evil Ruin, who must corrupt and enslave a world, otherwise you will be cast into the void for eternity. I really enjoy a lot of the text in the game. As Rack communicates, he often laughs and pulls some Invader Zim-like expressions, which genuinely amuse myself. You have a multitude of weapons and items to use, and you generally take enemies out within a few shots, unless you're versing bosses or these big guys. Something about the gameplay didn't feel right, however. Not that there were bugs or anything, for the most part, it felt really polished. It could have been the sheer amount of enemies. Defeating them always felt like a chore as it was just lock and shoot, and then you rinse and repeated that action. The map system could have been better as well, as generally I felt lost most of the time, and most of the playtime as well was just spent walking around aimlessly. Something that does however annoy myself is that it claims to be a bullet hell game. This really isn't the case, as there aren't many elements of this. You may encounter mobs that shoot bullets, or rooms in dungeons that fire bullets too, but for myself personally, the bullet hell genre has bullets everywhere for 80 to 90% of the time, and this however didn't fit the bill. On a side note, I liked that there was dungeon crawling within the game, but it really felt lackluster and seems to be more of an afterthought than anything. To be honest for myself, the dungeons just felt really boring. Just another part of the game that could have been a lot more polished, and I like dungeon crawling games, so I'm someone that spends my time looking for these stars of games, and it was a bit of a letdown to be honest. The bosses could have been a lot better as well, I feel like they dragged out a bit and were a little easy. Most of the time I was just dodging shots, just locking and shooting as well, and I don't know, the locking and shooting just didn't feel right. Something could have been done better. I like the items and I really like some of the effects that they do, but it just didn't feel special. A good thing though, there were puzzle elements in the game, and they were quite enjoyable, though they were not too difficult. Which is good for me because I don't find myself really enjoying a game that's too puzzling, if they're out of the box. It takes you a long time to figure them out, and I, I know that's just my way of thinking. But still, that's just something that I enjoyed about this. Let's talk about the great things that this game does, and that's visuals. I really enjoyed the visual style to be honest. It's what kept myself playing the game and pushing through it. I really like this art style, and I really enjoy some of the interactions they have between the main character, Rack, and just other people you find in the game. There's also this really creepy, like, psychic girl. Yeah, she, she looks a bit like Tim Burton-ish. It's very strange, but I like the fact that she was in there. I also really enjoyed the audio, and I like the different themes in each area. It felt like every sound effect fit right in with the game as well. However, when you load into new areas, it does do like a bit of a short delay, maybe even if it's like one, one to two seconds of it playing the previous area's theme while loading into the area, which should have been a lot more polished. Today I'm rating Rack and Ruin 2 out of 5. It had enjoyable visuals as well as good audio. The gameplay was however very lackluster and it was a bit of a bad map system. This game to me is shovelware, and I'd suggest just avoiding it unless you're waiting for a sale. Buy it when it's on sale because I think it's worth it then, unfortunately for the game. Because I really enjoyed the concept, but the execution just felt just a bit lackluster. Not that I could do any better, because if you saw a game by me it would be a stick figure and it'd also be probably the worst thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> I hope today's video has helped you decide whether or not you want to buy the game. I'm Tris or the official Phantom TV, and I want to say a quick thank you to the publishers for sending myself a copy of the game, because it means I can get these reviews out to you. I hope you have a great day or night, wherever you are in the world, and I hope to catch you in the future with some more Nintendo Switch content. I'll see you then. What was that impersonation? At least I know I can do this, ho ho! No, it needs to be a lot more like this! Oh. Welcome to my channel!